fast into it. Okay. So, hey guys, this is for the Chapter 7 practice problems for Chapter 7A of the Circular Motion chapter. I have a bunch of formulas here very quickly going through. Uh, 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians. It doesn't matter the radius of the circle. It's 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. It is also true that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. This formula here is dealing with angular speed or angular velocity if you have a direction. It's the theta, the change in the theta divided by the change in time. Now, the change in theta, it's how many degrees the object has traveled in a circular path. Whereas the change in time, typically it's in seconds. Now that is one form of angular speed. There's another form of angular speed and that has to do with radians per second. They both do the same basic thing. They're telling you how fast the object is going in a circle in a certain period of time. They're using different units for it. Okay, now we also talked about the idea of tangential velocity. Well, tangential velocity, if you're talking about a circle and you have an object that's moving in the circle, at some point what's going to happen is that the, the object is going to be tangent or right at the edge of the circle and it's going to go in a straight line and there's a certain velocity connected with it. That's the tangential velocity. And in this case here, you have the radius times the angular speed. Okay, so remember that funny looking W there is your angular speed. The R is the radius of the circle. So certainly if you were to go and change the radius of the circle, watch what happens to the tangential velocity there. Now we can use the tangential velocity, square that divided by the radius, and that's going to get us the centripetal acceleration. Now, the centripetal acceleration, if you have an object traveling in a circle, okay, there is this force that's going to, got, that's trying to pull on the object toward the center of the circle, and that's what we call centripetal acceleration. We will get to centripetal force a little bit later on. I am kind of speeding up because I'm trying to help people out for the review. This formula here happens to deal with angular acceleration. It's very similar to linear acceleration. And we can look at the change in velocity over the change in time. But we are dealing with circular motion. And with that, we use angular velocity. Angular velocity applies to circular motion, not straight line motion. So angular velocity, though, by the change in time, gets us our angular, circular, and angular acceleration. OK, let's get down to some problems here. So here, we're going to convert 4.5 radians into degrees. OK, this is a fairly straightforward one, because there's some facts that you know. You know that 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. So for 4.5 pi radians, OK, I'm going to use the bridge notation method. Some people call it dimensionalysis. Doesn't matter. The idea is the same. You want your U units to cancel out. Now, I need a conversion factor. Well, that conversion factor is 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. So 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi <coughs> radians. Okay? Now, again, we're changing it from radians into degrees. We multiply that out, okay? What are you going to notice? Well, the pi radians are going to cancel each other out because anything over itself is how much, guys? One. Right. Okay. So then it's going to be 4.5 times 360. <laughs> divided by 2. Yes, I am filming in front of a live audience. And you'll have to work that one out. Okay? Now, moving on. Now we have 789 degrees into radians. Okay? Well, and in this case, what would that look like? Well, it's 789 degrees, and I know that there's going to be 2 pi radians for every 360 degrees. So notice how the degrees are going to cancel each other out, okay? And then you can just multiply straight through, and that will tell you how many radians that you have. Now, what about this last one? This one 
here we have pi over 25 radians and we're going to change it into degrees. Okay, with that ladies and gentlemen, how do we set that up in our bridge notation system? Because what some people would say is, oh, I got to do it like this. And then I'm going to change it to degrees. I know that 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. So I'm going to go that way. I understand the setup, but it's not the right thing. When you've got a fraction like this, what you really need to do is go ahead and put in the pi over 25. Because this is a fraction, you're going to treat it the same way here. Okay? And then you'll notice, ah, the pi's cancel out. Now the 2 doesn't cancel out, but the pi's cancel out, and then you multiply straight on through. And that will tell you how many degrees that you have. Okay. Let's keep going here. Okay, so we got some problems. We have some problems here. And we're looking at Grandmaster C CD is spinning 755 degrees in seven seconds. Okay, what is the angular speed? Well, in this case, I did give you an angular speed. Okay, what I did was I gave you the total number of degrees that the thing was spinning, the record, the CD was spinning, and I also gave you a delta T. I gave you a time on that. So when we look at angular speed, we could look at 755 degrees over 7 seconds. That is an angular speed. Okay? Now, what if I want it in radians per second? Instead, remember that is also another unit for angular speed. This is just converting. Do I need to convert the seconds? No, I don't. I do need to convert the degrees into radians. So I know that I have 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. And then my degrees are going to cancel each other out, which is what we want. And then we just go ahead and multiply it through. So is it OK to have the pi in there for the radians? Sure, that's fine. That works for us here in this class. OK? I am not solving the problems for you. I'm setting it up. You guys have to solve the problems. But you've got everything here. Everything is set up. All you need to do is punch in the numbers in your calculator. That's all you got to do. OK. Let's move on here. Now, Luzerio CD is spinning at 4.5 radians in 7 seconds. What is the speed in degrees per second? Now I'm being more specific. I am giving you an angular speed again. In this case here, I have the change in radians. I have the time. So in this case, I have 4.5 radians over 7 seconds, because that's how much time it is. Think of it like along the linear, when we were doing linear problems, okay, where instead of radians, we thought in terms of meters. Now, time is still the same. That doesn't change for us, okay? So we'll go through, and we're going for degrees per second. All right, so I know that I have 360 degrees for every 2 pi radians. And then again, notice, notice that the radians are canceling each other out. And then you can go ahead and multiply that through. And what you will walk away with, you'll say, but wait a minute, we got pi on the bottom here. Yeah, you do. And I'm not going to give that for the problems. Okay, what I'm going to do is make sure that you guys don't have that. But what if you're in another situation? You can take pi to be 3.14 and multiply it that way. And that will work. Okay. OK. 
So we have another problem here. If the angular speed is 65 pi radians per second, wow, that's pretty fast. Over a period of 12 seconds, what is the angular acceleration? Okay, now remember a basic idea about acceleration is the change in speed or the change in velocity over the change in time. It doesn't matter if it's a straight line moving or we're talking circular. Okay, still the same idea. So let's get here. So I have here, I have my delta t, my change in time, right? And over here, I have my speed. So we're going to go ahead and say this is my angular speed. Notice I didn't put a v in there. I put that funny looking w. Why? Because it's an angular speed. That's why. Okay? It's not accurate for me to put a V in there, but the idea is still the same because this is circular. Think of it like circular velocity. Okay? So in this case here, uh, well, what's the formula for this? Well, if we're looking at angular acceleration, and then that's funny looking A there, is equal to 65 pi radians over per second over 12 seconds. Ah, now the penmanship is getting weird. Okay. So what you are going to get when you calculate the numbers, okay, that's easy to do. Yeah, you'll have a pi in there. That's fine uh, for that. But what I want to point something out to you guys, you're going to end up getting radians per second per second, that's going to be your unit. Because remember, you got radians per second up here, you got seconds down below. So that's why you're getting radians per second per second. Some people might be saying, but wait a minute, I know this another way. <coughs> there is another way. Because you can also say radians per second squared, can't you? Because they mean the same thing. Okay? I will take either answer, either unit for that. Okay. All right, I've got to check on my timing. Okay. Haters gonna hate. The moon goes around the earth in about 27.3 days. What is its angular velocity? Okay, well first they gave us a time, right? So here is our time, but it's in days, not in seconds. We need to change that into seconds. Now, the thing comes down to is, wait a minute, how much distance are we talking? Because the moon is going around the Earth. Well, don't think, don't think in terms of the miles or the kilometers that the moon is going around the Earth. Think in terms of radians. Because remember, the thing about radians, it's not going to be the same length for different things. For example, if you're looking at the number of radians on a quarter, it's not going to be the same as the radians on a dime, right? Because the radius of the quarter and the radius of the dime are different. So here, the moon goes around the Earth in about 27.3 days, angular velocity. Moon going around the Earth, okay, that's 2 pi radians. Anytime something goes around once, it's 2 pi radians. Always, always, always. Okay? So I know it's 2 pi radians, and then now it's a question of 27.3 days. I need to change this into seconds. So if I think about it, I can go from days into hours, right? So in one day, I'm going to have 24 hours. Okay. And then, in 24 hours, I have one hour is 60 minutes. And then, in one minute, I'm going to have 60 seconds. So I'm changing, I'm going through the hassle of changing the days in the seconds. It's going to be a big number, okay? So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and days cancel out perfectly well, okay? Our minutes cancel out perfectly well. I'm just showing you guys how we're canceling things out and our hours cancel out, okay? And 
That's it. We got radians per second. Now all you got to do is just multiply through on this. Okay? Next one. Probably going to be our last. You have a toy plane on a string that goes around three complete circles in nine seconds. What is its angular velocity? Okay. Here is our delta T. And since the plane is going in three complete circles, ladies and gentlemen, if it's going in three complete circles, it's two pi radians for one circle. That gives us six pi radians. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so six pi radians divided by nine seconds. And that's it. That's all you got to worry about here. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Yeah, my class is exiting. That is true that my class is exiting. They do need to move on to their other classes. As I was trying to help them review. Okay. So looking at this one here, this is probably going to be my last one. A satellite is orbiting the Earth at 0 .00087 radians per second. How long will it take to circle the entire world? Again, we're looking at a, here is our angular speed. They're asking us for the time. We don't know. The fact that it circles the entire world, that gives us our distance. But in this case, we got to look at it in radians. If you're circling the world once, guess what? That's 2 pi radians. Okay? So we're looking at the time. We know that our angular speed is equal to the change in our radians over the change in time. Now, we already have our angular speed. With that, guys, we can go ahead and switch out. We can multiply both sides by t, delta t, divide both sides by w, our angular speed. We can now go ahead and say our change in radians over our angular speed will give us our time. So guys, that means 2 pi radians, 2 pi radians divided by 0 0.00087 radians per second and guys, that is going to be a very large number, and that's going to give us how long is it going to take to circle the entire world. It's going to take a while. All right. Hey, I'm glad uh, I was able to help you guys out for this video, and uh, I wish you many successes. So long, take care, and God bless.